Hey, welcome to a new video. Let's go back in time to an era when not only dinosaurs roamed the earth. These ancient landscapes were dominated by creatures that would even make the most fearsome dinosaurs shudder with fear. And when you think about it, you're probably glad that nowadays we only have to deal with lions, wolves, and sharks. Because the world was a lot rougher back then. Today we'll show you 20 ancient animals that were scarier than dinosaurs. Are you new to this channel? Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And before we start, also like the video. Number 20. The Hyaenodon belongs to the Creodon family, an order of extinct mammals. These creatures were terrifying carnivores that emerged about 10 million years after the disappearance of dinosaurs. But here's the scary part. They went extinct approximately 20 million years ago, leaving no direct descendants behind. Their nearly otherworldly large jaws were a true characteristic, and they even require extra muscles in their necks to support them. The name Hyaenodon comes from the Greek words for hyena tooth. It was a group of prehistoric predators that did their thing from the late Eocene to the early Miocene, about 40 to 20 million years ago. They roamed the plains of North America, Eurasia, and Africa. The fact that we have so many fossils of Hyanodon is thanks to many different species in their vast distribution. We also found many different specimens of this ancient predator. The biggest ones, like H. Gigas, were as large as wolves, and probably hunted in a way similar to wolves, but they also scavenged, like hyenas. On the other end of the spectrum, the smallest species, H. Migrodon, was not much bigger than a house cat. Like modern dogs that break bones, Hyanodon likely broke the neck of its prey with a quick bite. Number 19. Did you know that Gigantopithecus is the largest ape ever, well, and it ultimately perished because of its immense size? It was truly a giant, standing up to 10 feet or 3 meters tall, and weighing an astonishing 1,100 pounds or 500 kilograms. This gigantic ape lived in the less tropical forests of what is now southern China for an impressive period of 6 to 9 million years. But about 100,000 years ago, during the onset of the Pleistocene's last ice age, the climate began to change, and that spelled its doom. It turned out that its enormous size was a significant disadvantage when the forest turned into open savannas, and there was much less fruit to be found. Gigantopithecus was primarily a fruit eater, and it failed to adapt to the new food sources of grasses, roots, and leaves in its environment. Its colossal body made it especially vulnerable to changes in its habitat. And here's something else interesting. Large animals like Gigantopithecus typically have fewer offspring, meaning their populations are more vulnerable to environmental changes. So while this ape may not have been the smartest when it came to dealing with changes, it's still quite impressive to imagine how intelligent such a gigantic creature would have been. Number 18. In the prehistoric Aromanga Sea approximately 105 million years ago, a terrifying predator ruled the skies, Thapungaka Shawi, also known as a true dragon. With its immense wingspan of almost 30 feet or 9 meters and a skull about 3 feet or 91 centimeters wide, it was a true phenomenon. The colossal flyer hunted prey with its terrifying spear-like mouth, filled with up to 40 razor-sharp teeth. If you saw it, you would likely freeze with fear. Its long neck connected its impressive skull to a pair of enormous wings, making it look like a terrifying creature from another era. It was not only the largest pterosaur ever discovered in Australia, but also one of the most frightening aerial predators of all time. Its jaw remains date back to the Cretaceous, a period between 145 and 65 million years ago. With its unique anatomy, it was a masterful hunter, capable of silently descending on its unsuspecting prey. It's almost like finding yourself in a prehistoric adventure movie, don't you think? Number 17. Imagine being a modern crocodile floating in the water, thinking you're the king of your surroundings. But what if you suddenly came face to face with your ancestor? The ancient crocodile Pristichampsis. The prehistoric powerhouse would surely give you a scare. Unlike the crocodiles we know today, Pristichampsis had several features that made it perfect for life on land. Its legs were longer than those of modern crocodiles, allowing it to move more efficiently on land. And those hoof-like tips on its toes? They provide extra grip for running on dry land. This creature even had a round tail instead of a flattened one, indicating that it didn't need to swim in the water as often as its modern relatives. And let's talk about its teeth. They resembled those of large dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurs. With such teeth, it was a master at catching and subduing prey. In the warm forests of the early Eocene, this crocodile was a formidable predator. But over time, as crocodiles specialized in aquatic life, this species slowly disappeared. Its terrestrial lifestyle became less favorable compared to the aquatic relatives. Number 16. Dolichorine Chops, a cool name for a plesiosaur with a short neck, swam around approximately 94 million years ago. These guys were truly rock stars of the sea, with their long paddle-like fins allowing them to glide through the water like acrobats, much like penguins on ice. With their large, sharp eyes, they could track down small prey like real detectives. Their mouths were filled with 30 to 40 teeth, but surprisingly, they didn't use them for chewing. Nope, they swallowed their prey whole. They measured 13 to 16.5 feet, or 4 to 5 meters in length, and likely had super smooth skin. 
Their fins contained nearly a hundred bones, and even helped them shoot through the water like a spear, but they were too stiff to use on land. Despite being able to dive deep, the species often had to come up for air. Fortunately, they didn't have many enemies, except for scary sharks and a few other species. Number 15. Mesosaurus, which means middle lizard in Greek, was an impressive reptile that surfaced during the early Permian, approximately 300 million years ago. Unlike its fully terrestrial ancestors, this animal decided to partially inhabit the water, similar to prehistoric amphibians that came before it. This unique reptile made the swamps of Africa and South America its home. What truly set Mesosaurus apart in the early Permian was its skull structure. Unlike most reptiles of that time, it lacked openings on the sides of its skull, as was typical with other reptiles. This made it classified as an anapsid reptile. Despite these unique features, Mesosaurus closely resembled a small prehistoric crocodile. Its slender teeth were likely adapted for filtering plankton. The idea that this ancient creature hunted both on land and in water makes it extra intriguing and a tad bit frightening. Number 14. Antelodon is a large group of mammals closely related to pigs, known as the killer pig, due to its terrifying character. These creatures live side by side with oreodons, a peculiar group of mammals resembling sheep, but actually more closely related to camels. Fossil finds indicate that Antelodons emerged during the Middle Eocene, about 49 to 37 million years ago, in Mongolia. They spread across Asia, Europe, and North America before eventually becoming extinct, which was during the early Miocene, approximately 19 to 16 million years ago. While the smallest entelodons weighed only about 331 pounds or 151 kilograms, about the size of a large male white-tailed deer, the largest species could weigh up to almost 2,000 pounds or 900 kilograms, comparable to a Clydesdale horse. Their large skulls were quite remarkable, making up about 35 to 45 percent of their total body length. These skulls also had tooth-like protrusions of bone, indicating adaptations for consuming tough or hard food, including crushing bones. Like modern pigs, this species was likely omnivores, feeding on a mix of plant and animal material. Despite their impressive size, their limbs were adapted for running on land. Number 13. On the vast plains of Argentina, a remarkable and terrifying sight could be seen. Towering feathered creatures surpassing the height of a human. These were the terror birds, the only group of carnivores flightless birds to have ever existed. Scientifically known as forest racids, they reigned as the top predators of their time in South America. And when we say surpassed, we truly mean surpassed. The largest species was about 10 feet or 3 meters long, and weighed over 992 pounds or 450 kilograms. They also had extraordinarily long legs, that not only allowed efficient movement over long distances, but also enabled the larger of the species to achieve incredible speeds. Although estimates of their speed vary, it's believed that the largest members of this group could reach speeds of at least 28 miles per hour, or 45 kilometers per hour. Despite their skill as runners, they likely used ambush tactics to approach their prey. Their legs, equipped with sharp claws, served various purposes. They could tear meat from carcasses, and the birds could also use their body weight to exert pressure on the prey, and then remove pieces of meat. Number 12. Doryapsis is an ancient jawless fish, and it swam in the oceans during the early Devonian and it had a striking and peculiar body shape. Its body was covered with a jug-shaped armor, with large gill plates protruding and curving beside the boxy body. Additionally, this fish had a long, flexible tail and an elongated, slender snout protruding forward. Two thin, nail-like projections also emerged from the sides of the head body, almost at a right angle from the front snout. Although the exact function of these three spikes remains uncertain, it's speculated that the rear spikes pointed sideways may have acted as hydroplanes, helping to maintain a flat swimming position. The front spike, on the other hand, may have been used to stir up soft sediment, exposing small invertebrates and organic material. These food sources could then be drawn into the mouth of the jawless fish. The peculiar body shape of this fish has sparked discussions about its lifestyle. Two main hypotheses have emerged. The first suggests that it primarily lived in the upper layers of the water column as a surface pelagic swimmer. The second hypothesis proposes that it was a benthic burrower, residing in the sediments of the ocean floor and feeding. Number 11. The origin of large predatory marine creatures began approximately 245 million years ago, with a mighty ichthyosaurus named Thotolotorchin sorphagus. It was also known as the lizard-devouring ruler of the seas. What made this creature so special was not only its impressive appearance, but also its hunting skills. While most ichthyosaurs had small pointed teeth to catch small and slippery prey, this species had a unique dental arrangement. Its teeth were about 4 inches or 10 centimeters high, and had a crown of 2 inches or 5 centimeters, with a leaf-shaped appearance and two cutting edges. 
Although not serrated, these teeth resemble those of other terrifying marine creatures, such as mosasaurs and large pylosaurs. This species appeared just 5 million years after the most devastating mass extinction event ever. This shows that some oceans could recover rapidly after such a catastrophic event. This prehistoric creature is also a significant discovery in the fossil world, because it's one of the earliest known marine predators that hunted large marine animals, placing it at the top of the food chain. Number 10. In the marshes along the Rio Grande in Texas, about 70 million years ago, roamed a creature that was both impressive and terrifying. Quetzalcoatlus was a pterosaur measuring up to 12 feet or 3.7 meters tall, with an enormous wingspan of 37 to 40 feet, or 11.3 to 12.2 meters. It's known as the largest flying animal in Earth's history. But you might wonder how it could walk with wings touching the ground, and how such a large animal could fly at all. With a neck of 6 feet or 1.8 meters, and a skull of 4 feet or 1.2 meters high, it was basically a stork on steroids. It lived approximately 68 to 66 million years ago, and disappeared as the Mesozoic era ended, leaving much of its biology a mystery. It's also suggested that Quetzalcoatlus stood upright, reaching a height of 16.5 feet or 5 meters, equal to that of a giraffe. On the ground, its beak offered a wide view of the surroundings. With its stature, it was the largest carnivore on the continent, even larger than the Tyrannosaurus rex, although the latter surpassed it in weight. Number 9. Arctotus, also known as the giant short-faced bear, is the largest carnivorous mammal we know from the Pleistocene of North America. In fact, it can even claim the title of the largest carnivorous animal since the disappearance of dinosaurs at the end of the Cretaceous. This bear was undoubtedly the fastest runner among its kind and had a slimmer and longer build than modern bears. When walking, it stood an impressive 5 feet or 1.5 meters tall at its shoulders. But when standing on its hind legs, it could reach a height of up to 12 feet or 3.7 meters. Unlike its contemporary counterparts, Arctotus had toes that pointed straight forward, allowing it to move swiftly and agilely. Despite its enormous weight of over 1,500 pounds or 680 kilograms, it's believed to have reached speeds of over 40 miles per hour or 64 kilometers per hour. The skull structure and tearing teeth of Arctotus suggest a highly carnivorous diet. Its widely spaced and forward-facing eye sockets provided excellent vision, while its short, broad snout suggested a keen sense of smell. The jaws of the bear, remarkably wide in proportion to their shortness, along with the massive muscle attachments, gave it a powerful bite and the ability to crush bones to access nutritious marrow. Number 8. Meet Neurologus rex, the king of rabbits from Menorca, weighing a whopping 26.5 pounds or 12 kilograms. This gigantic rabbit was about six times larger than the current European rabbit. Neurologus rex lived approximately three to five million years ago, and it's possibly one of the earliest known examples of the island rule in mammalian evolution. According to this rule, animals on islands often change in size, with large animals becoming smaller and small animals becoming larger. This change is often attributed to factors such as less food or the absence of predators on the mainland. For Neurologus rex, the absence of predators allow this rabbit to reach enormous dimensions. It also lost its ability to hop and adapted to a subterranean life, where it likely dug up roots and tubers to eat. Due to the lack of predators, it also experienced a decrease in its vision and hearing. This giant rabbit lived on an island in the western Mediterranean during the Pliocene. Its ancestors likely arrived on the island about 5 million years ago. Number 7. Tarchosuchus is a species of enormous crocodile-like reptile that is now extinct but once ruled the earth and ranks among the largest reptiles of its kind. Unlike modern crocodiles, these giants continued to grow throughout their lives, and their name actually means flesh crocodile in Latin. When fully grown, they could reach an impressive length of 36 to 39 feet, or 11 to 12 meters, and weigh an average of about 8 tons. With their telescopic eyes and long snout, which made up to 75% of its head, they were perfectly adapted for hunting. Due to their enormous size, this species had the ability to prey on large dinosaurs. They were masters at surprising their prey, lurking at the water's edge or below the water's surface until the right moment to strike. In a flash, they would emerge and seize their prey. When not hunting, these giant crocodile-like reptiles would bask in the sun on the banks of water bodies. But when threatened by larger predators like Argentinosaurus, they would quickly dive into the water for protection. Number 6. In the spring of 1923, researchers set up camp in Erdenmana, known as the Valley of the Jewels in Inner Mongolia. During their expedition, they discovered a remarkably well-preserved skull of a gigantic creature, almost 3 feet or 0.90 meters long. This creature, named Andrew Sarchus mongoliensis, is the only known specimen of its kind to this day. It roamed the Earth approximately 45 million years ago, and was estimated to be about 6 feet or 1.83 meters tall at the shoulder, and about 12 feet or 3.6 meters long. This makes it the largest known terrestrial predator ever. What makes this species unique is its close relationship with hippos and whales. 
showing how diverse the evolutionary paths of different species can be. With its impressive size, it earned the nickname Bone Crusher. This fearsome beast lived during the Eocene about 32 to 60 million years ago. With its snout, sharp teeth, and flat molars, it could easily crush bones. Whether it actively hunted or scavenged remains a mystery, but its colossal skull suggests that it may have been twice the size of a grizzly bear, confirming its status as the largest animal of its time, and perhaps ever. Number 5. Dunkleostis is the largest plesoderm ever, estimated to have been about 10 and 26 feet or 3 and 8 meters long. The ancient fish, like all plasoderms, had a sturdy tank-like external armor covering its head, jaws, and thorax. Its lifestyle resembled that of a pelagic shark, but it was much more robustly built. And as one of the first true apex predators on Earth, it occupied a dominant position. It could consume virtually any animal it encountered, and had few natural enemies. This was partly due to its enormous size and the remarkable structure of its jaws. The bony plates forming its jaws were transformed into tusks and long cutting edges. Moreover, the upper and lower jaws scraped against each other, resulting in self-sharpening. These adaptations allowed Dunkleostis to pierce through any animal of its time. Interestingly, evidence has been found of scraping and puncture marks on the armor of other Dunkleostis, suggesting that they even preyed on each other. Number 4. Dinotherium was a gigantic land mammal from the late Miocene to the early Pleistocene, and belonged to the largest creatures of all time. Lengths ranged from 11.5 to 23 feet, or 3.5 to 7 meters, with a shoulder height of 10 to 16.5 feet, or 3 to 5 meters, and a weight of up to 26,500 pounds, or 12,000 kilograms. The name Dinotherium from Greek for terrible beast reflects its immense size and impressive appearance. For millions of years, it shared the world with other giants and they were known as Thunder Beasts. But what truly stood out about Dinotherium were its short, downward curving tusks. Initially, it was that these tusks were used for digging in freshwater habitats, but it was later revealed that it used its forelimbs for this purpose. The tusks likely served as pickaxes for breaking off branches. Although the species survived for a long time, isolated populations eventually disappeared around 12,000 years ago, shortly after the end of the last ice age. Some believe changing climatic conditions were the cause, while others think Homo sapiens hunting may have contributed to their demise. These gigantic creatures continue to fascinate us to this day. Number 3. Helicoprion, the mysterious fossil creature that has puzzled scientists for years, is one of the biggest enigmas in paleontology. These fossilized worlds of elongated teeth, resembling primitive versions of circular jaws, have captivated researchers. They first appeared in the Devonian and eventually disappeared during the early Triassic. Paleontologists realized these petrified forms actually belonged to a shark-like fish. What made this species truly intriguing was the absence of upper teeth. The spiral of teeth represented the entire dental arsenal of the creature. Further insights were gained from the fragments of this creature's skull, revealing it was not a typical shark. It possessed a unique double articulation of its cranial cartilage characteristic of a group of cartilaginous fish. While some might assume, based on its appearance, that it was a precursor to modern sharks, it actually belonged to a separate branch within the ancient fish world. But imagine if this thing existed today. How terrifying would that have been? Number 2. In the Cenozoic era, which began approximately 65.5 million years ago, an extinct giant ground sloth called Megatherium roamed South America. The scientific name of this massive sloth translates to Great Beast from America. Despite their immense size, which could reach up to 4 tons, fossils confirm they were related to modern sloths. During this period, Megatherium underwent remarkable evolution, resulting in a size comparable to that of a modern elephant. Equipped with enormous claws and teeth, it primarily fed on leaves and shrubs. Their teeth were specially positioned on the sides of their jaws to facilitate the consumption of plants. Megatherium was astonishingly 10 times larger than contemporary sloths. It's interesting to note that it coexisted with humans, as evidenced by fossils with cut marks. This suggests that these giant sloths were part of the human diet thousands of years ago. Number 1. During the Paleocene, approximately 58 to 60 million years ago, a significant event occurred in a region that had recently recovered from a massive asteroid impact. This event led to the tropical rainforests that exist along the equator today. In the lush and dense landscape saturated with moisture and swamps, Titanoboa found ample hiding places. Titanoboa was a giant snake species that coexisted with other enormous creatures, such as crocodiles of about 13 feet or 4 meters, and turtles of about 8 feet or 2.5 meters. Although it resembled today's anacondas in appearance, it far exceeded them in size. With an average length of about 46 feet or 14 meters, Titanoboa was a third larger than the largest snake existing today, the green anaconda. Due to its immense size, the world's largest snake couldn't live in trees. Instead, it mainly inhabited the ground near water sources. It mostly remained inactive, patiently waiting to ambush its prey. 
Titano Boa's powerful bite allowed it to overpower and consume numerous giant turtles or even crocodiles, which unfortunately became its victims. After swallowing its prey whole, it would digest them for months, sustaining itself by eating three to four times a year. Which prehistoric animal would you like to see brought back to life? Let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos we've made, click one on the screen or take a look at the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.